All right, my name's Cassie Showstrom, um, and my husband and I have been experiencing our journey with infertility for about eight, seven years. Um, we had no reason to really anticipate we'd have issues having children. Um, we waited five years after marriage. We were just wanting to enjoy being a couple, being together, and then kind of the whole story when you start trying, nothing's happening. Um, so went through you know, numerous medical procedures. We went through three intrauterine inseminations after already trying um, different um, medicine options and chiropractor appointments, different holistic things. Um, then those, I'd say it would be a year of the intrauterine inseminations that we did, nothing had worked. So then we um, moved on to the next step of doing IVF. And we went through the Fargo Clinic here and um, we did one retrieval and one frozen transfer. We had one embryo and it did not work. So that was about three years ago we had done that. So we, um, we were open about it from the beginning. Um, I am a nurse and I work in the NICU with babies. And so I think that helped me to be open and be able to talk about difficult things. Um, it also was hard because I work with babies. And so you see all these happy situations or just you know, taking care of babies, helping families take care of their babies, and you just see how easy it can be for people to have babies. And then I did recognize too in the work environment or family and friends how uh, there was empathy, but it was really hard. People didn't know what to say. And so it was kind of an awkward subject to talk about where they had felt bad and wanted to help us, but there was not much for them to say or do that they knew would help. So. Um, so I did not find any support groups around right away and then I had heard of just one existing in the whole state and it made me really sad because it really brought down the fact that this is a medical diagnosis and you feel really alone because nobody really wants to talk about it and until you meet someone who's experienced it and you feel like oh my gosh you get it um, it feels like it really downplays the fact that it's a diagnosis and a disease. So you really feel alone in the matter. Mm -hmm. um, so I met Tara when the first round of legislation came about. Um, that was in 2019. And I spoke to the senators there with my story, my experience with insurance and the lack of coverage. Um, and then from then on out, when you created Everlasting Hope, I just felt like, okay, I can have a purpose here to help advocate and let people know what is going on. Um, a lot of people don't even recognize, myself included, until I was going through it, how, how once you have the diagnosis of infertility, there's a lack of coverage, actually 100% lack of coverage, because you have that on your chart. So they are able to charge you full price for every visit, every ultrasound, every lab draw, versus before you may have had some form of coverage. It helped me heal with infertility, being an advocate and being able to talk about it. As awkward as it is, I talked about sperm and egg to the legislators of North Dakota. And I feel like being a nurse helped me be able to talk about it, but you have to be able to be open so people know that this is a real condition people are experiencing and it is painful, it's emotional, it's hard. And um, I felt like there was, once someone talking about it, there was a lot of great listening and um, interest in to learning more about it and being more aware. Everlasting Hope helped me to bring to my place of work, um, to bring to administration and people involved in the women's clinic as to how we can improve care for those experiencing infertility. Um, as a nurse, I'm able to see on the patient care end and then on the patient end as to how um, there was a lot of lapses in what can be done to help take care of these patients respectfully and um, keeping everything very dignified and trying to help them feel that they're important and what they're going through matters. So um, I was able to meet with Everlasting Hope and our administration as to what we can do and they were open to that and very receptive to the information and then also with Everlasting Hope they have packages which allows someone to go to their employer and present the benefits of having a insurance option. I know a lot of people would pay extra, add on a package that may help them cover infertility. So they have that option to bring it to employer and present the benefits. 
of satisfaction of lower cost and all of that with um, an insurance add-on. So, um, I was able to attend the first Journey to Parenthood conference and I felt like it was a great, great um, collaboration on any end of the infertility or infant loss spectrum as to how you can summarize from the beginning what you may go through in this option. How can you best um, make your chances to succeed getting pregnant naturally versus how you can go into, how do you find an OB doc that you can go to for intrauterine inseminations or IVF or surrogacy or adoption. So it was great to have kind of one package place to experience all the information and then meet other people that are going through whatever story they're going through. Um, it's really great because you meet these people that you haven't really met before and you feel like, oh, we're already friends. I know what you, you've gone through and what you're experiencing and what feels good to be together and talk about. Um, we have a I have a great group text group going with people where those moments in life come up that are hard and you just need to say, I just have to get this off my chest, it's hard, and then you feel instantly better because they get it and it just kind of, boom, off your mind and things are better and um, great friendships like that, great like doing the walk, got my family and friends involved and out um, and, and meeting, meeting all the other people I talk about in this group <laughs> all the time. <laughs> Family and friends came to the Walk of Hope because they were like, great, we can do something that's gonna help support this. And we had a huge turnout. My mom made big signs. My dog came with, because <laughs> he's always wanted to support us. <laughs> and it was great because everyone was be able to get together and just kind of do what they can at the moment to help promote awareness. So the walk was great. I think if I could encourage anyone going through this, to reach out and it doesn't have to be publicly, but try to reach out to find someone who maybe is going through it and can understand what your relationship has been like lately with infertility and your family and your spouse. And um, I know it's awkward to talk about and a lot of people choose not to, but if there's a way you can reach out, find like maybe follow an online support group or just kind of once you talk about it, you'd be surprised at how many people will say, oh my gosh, we experienced that, or my, my sister did, or my daughter did, or the network that can be available and people who want to be available for you um, and understand what to say that's helpful to you and not hurtful. It's, it's just kind of brings a weight off your shoulder. So however you can and whatever you're comfortable with, just kind of reaching out to let other people know to some extent that you're comfortable with what's going on and how they can help you.